macroeconomics and overview hello kids welcome back to world of economics i hope you all enjoyed the last tour to world of economics let me take you to another part of the world of economics featuring aspiring youngsters as you all also as you all know economics is branched into two main parts microeconomics and macroeconomics you are aware that microeconomics is the study of the behavior of individual economic agents in the markets for different goods and services prices and quantities of goods and services that are determined through the interaction of individuals in these markets macroeconomics on the other hand is the study of the economy as a whole here we try to find out how the levels of aggregate measures such as total output employment and aggregate price level are determined and how the levels of these aggregate measures change over time in macroeconomics we simplify the analysis of how the country's total output and the employment level are related to variables like prices rate of interest wage rates and so on by focusing on a single imaginary commodity we think of the level of output price and employment of the imaginary commodity as the representative of all the goods and services produced within the economy the level of output price or employment of this representative good reflects the average production level price or employment level of all the goods and services of the economy when say prices start rising or employment and production levels start falling the general directions of the movements of these variables for all the individual commodities are usually same as they can be seen for the aggregates of the economy as a whole but while focusing on a representative good we may overlook some vital distinctive characters of individual goods for example production conditions of agricultural and industrial commodities are of a different nature or if we treat a single category of labor as a representative of all kinds of labor we may be unable to distinguish the labor of the manager of a firm from the labor of the accountant of the firm therefore in many cases instead of a single representative category of good we may take three general kinds of commodities as a representative of all commodities being produced within the economy agricultural goods industrial goods and services is everything clear till now yes shane good let's move further in macroeconomics we also try to address situations facing the economy as a whole according to adam smith the founding father of modern economics if the buyers and sellers in each market take their decisions following only their own self interest economists will not need to think of the wealth and welfare of the country as a whole separately but economists gradually discovered that in some cases the markets did not or could not exist in some other cases the markets existed but failed to produce equilibrium of demand and supply in a large number of situations society had decided to pursue certain important social goals unselfishly for which some of the aggregate effects of the microeconomic decisions made by the individual economic agents needed to be modified therefore economists had to study the effects of taxation 
and other budgetary policies and policies for bringing about changes in money supply, the rate of interest, wages, employment and output on the economy. Hence, we can say that macroeconomics has deep roots in microeconomics as it has to study the aggregate effects of the forces of demand and supply in the markets. Moreover, macroeconomics deals with policies aimed at modifying these forces if necessary to remove or reduce unemployment, to improve access to education and primary health care for all, to provide for good administration, to provide sufficiently for the defense of the country, and so on. But how did the concept of macroeconomics emerge? Who coined the term macroeconomics? Macroeconomics emerged as a separate branch in 1936 with the publication of John Maynard Keynes' revolutionary book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. Before Keynes, the dominant thinking in economics was that all the laborers who are ready to work will find employment and all the factories will be working at their full capacity. This school of thought is known as the classical tradition. However, during the late 1920s and the early 1930s, the output and employment levels in Europe and North America declined at a large scale. These events made economists think about the functioning of the economy in a new way. Keynes book was an attempt in this direction. According to Keynes, the working of an economy and the interdependence of different sectors of the economy should be examined in totality and hence it led to the emergence of the subject of macroeconomics. I hope all the information is simple for you all to understand. Yes, Shane. Now let's have a quick recap of our journey. In a nutshell, macroeconomics is that branch of economics which is concerned with the working of the whole national economy or large sectors of it. It deals with national price, output, unemployment, inflation and international trade. Macroeconomics also takes into account various interlinkages which may exist between the different sectors of an economy. This is what distinguishes it from microeconomics, which mostly examines the functioning of the particular sectors of the economy, assuming that the rest of the economy remains the same. Macroeconomics emerged as a separate subject in the 1930s due to Keynes. The Great Depression, which dealt a blow to the economies of developed nations, had provided Keynes with the inspiration for his writings.